Most baby foods sold in the U.S. don't meet international nutritional stand, uh, standards and contain misleading messaging. Wait, let me guess. High fructose corn syrup. Sixty percent of baby food will instantly kill your child. Great. Seventy percent didn't meet protein recommendations. Forty-four percent exceeded. How much? Like it's it's like too much sawdust. Yeah. 44% exceeded total sugar recommendations. 20% went over sodium guidelines. Dude, how are you loading your fucking baby food with sodium and sugar and stuff? Who gives a f if the baby doesn't think it's tasty? They're a baby. Oh, they, they cry and don't eat it? Let them cook it out a bit. Come back in three hours. See how they feel then. Okay? What, it, like, who gives a shit? It's for preservation, not taste, I'm pretty sure. Maybe. How do I find actual health advice? It's not, it's, it's, it's really not that difficult. Hit your macros, limit calories, try not to eat, you know, too many trans fats or added sugars. It's genuinely to get babies addicted to sweetness slash taste early. Yeah. If you think that's too evil for food companies, you're an idiot. They love doing that shit, you know? One of the reasons why the Camel Camel logo, you know, on cigarettes, the reason they used like uh, 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 cartoon characters was so when kids saw them when they were young, they'd go like, oh, and then when they got old enough to smoke, they would buy those. Like they were, they had the long game in mind. Joe, Joe Camel, yeah, there you go. They had the long game in mind, you know. Get get kids hooked on it early, even before they could smoke. Get kids hooked on sugar. Each product had an average of four point seven prohibited claims, with some having as many as eleven. The most commonly misused claims were non-GMO, organic, no BPA, no artificial colors, flavors. Wow, that's crazy! A bunch of nothing labels that the food companies love to misuse in an effort to convince people that their food is healthy, when the real devil is the added sugar. Huh. Snack and finger foods often referred to fruit or vegetables in the product name, despite being primarily made of flour or other starches. Could I could I be a little bit um, of an asshole for a second and introduce like a skill issue element to this? If you're a parent and you're not looking at the baby food ingredients on the on the side of the can, aren't you being a little bit of an asshole? Like, are you seriously just reading the big colorful letters on the front of the baby food like oh it's healthy that's great like are you really not turning it around and looking at the the nutrients i feel like you're being a little bit inconsiderate to your baby you should be doing that for your own food too is it not required to list nutrients in america yeah but that doesn't mean people are going to read them the obesity epidemic it's like a serious it's like a serious disease and we don't give a shit making all of our babies fat Bosh, to be fair, I feel the need to point out that baby food is very expensive and a lot of people are too poor to even consider a more expensive brand with legit ingredients. I guess that's true to an extent. I feel like, I feel like, can you make baby food? How, can you, could you like not mush up a bunch of like vegetables and stuff? Cause it's not, it's not like baby food. Like we fed babies before baby food was a thing. Like you could like get some carrots and peas and mash it up, right? Or like blend it. I don't know. I'm not a parent. I know being a parent is difficult. I know. I'm just saying that even if I was struggling for cash and I turned around the can, it was like, oh, here's the baby food that I can afford. Uh, for every gram of nutrients, there's three grams of, you know, high fructose corn syrup. I feel like I might consider blending peas and carrots. Yeah, I get that, Vermin. Honestly, you don't need to mash up food for babies. Yeah, what are they going to do? Go to a different restaurant? Me slapping down a, a, you know, like a pork roast in front of my six-month-old. All right, asshole. It's it's sink or swim, okay? This got all the nutrients you need. Handing him a steak knife. Good luck. Yeah, teeth on this, you wit. Uh, yeah, it's true. It can only keep for a little while, Vermin. They only drink milk until six months? Well, that's if they're not a uh, Yakubian. Because we have, we can, we can do dairy forever. Because we have the unique, we be, white people are like natural babies, and that we keep the uh, gut bacteria required to digest lactase uh, indefinitely. Because we're naturally babies. Lactase is the digester. Oh yeah, lactase is the is the enzyme. Lactose is the thing. Yeah. Hey parent, here I fed my kids blended veggies and fruit and meat, and now they have no problem eating veggies and don't really care about sweets. Yeah, I don't know enough about. I feel like. Is is child rearing much the same as diet advice 
where in reality it's actually really simple and the only reason people think it's complicated is because the environment is clouded with grifters who want to make you feel insecure about your every like sensible decision like are you supposed to comfort your child if they're crying from the crib at night some people say no because that fosters dependency some people say yes because crying is meant to attract the attention of a parent i don't know what the right answer is how complicated is the nutrient blend that a baby needs it can't be that complicated because if it was that complicated we never would have survived to the industrial revolution like it can't be that serious you know like oh you need to blend these 78 like nutrients about like i i don't i don't think that babies in the you know, in ancient Egypt, we're getting this stuff, and they did all right. They're fine, I guess. They're all dead now, but I will be in 4,000 years. And then if you ever do anything wrong once, it's like you've traumatized your kid. You know what I mean? Like you, like you, you stub your toe around them and shout really loud, and they get startled, and they're going to be having nightmares in four years about that, and they won't even know why. They're gonna they're gonna wake up like viscerally fearing your devilish shout. And they're gonna be like scared of you when you run to comfort them because they yelled really loud when they woke up and it's 3 a.m. And you're gonna be like, what the f what's wrong? What hello? And they're gonna be like, no, and back away from you, and you will never know why. And it's because when they were six months old, you stubbed your toe around them and yelled really loud. And you will never know. Skill issue on the kid? Agreed, but they make it your problem. It's not that's the if if your kid has a skill issue, it becomes your skill issue. Which is f***ed up. Babies will literally cry because their dad shaved. Yeah, that's why I don't shave. For for you guys. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go live and you guys are gonna be like, where's Vosh? Most of you will get it eventually, but a significant portion of you never will. And you'll just assume I died or never came back or something. And that cuts into my margins. This is why you don't react to things around kids. You act normal, so will they. That's true. That Okay, this is one of the things that I don't know because I'm not a parent, but I believe sincerely. And it's that if your kid falls or injures themselves, you have to stone face that shit. Because if you run over to them freaking out, they're gonna go like, oh, this is a big deal and freak out, you know? If your kid loses their hand in the in the the like the saw table, you need to go mosey on over there and be like, "Well, that's why you have to be careful around the tools, son. You know, you don't want to because if you start yelling, they might freak out." And then it's a whole problem. Well, you also have to show them it's okay to express emotion. Be happy for them. If you if a kid falls over and like scrapes their knee, you got to be like, "Oh, did a little fall there. Hey, hey, how we doing?" You know? Because if you're jovial, they're more likely to, or, or you know, like, yeah, you got, you have to laugh at them. Be like, you fucking idiot. Yeah, it's because you, you don't want them to freak out. Yeah, kid loses a hand, they're a cyborg now. Okay, the parents in chat, I assume, are telling me I'm right on this one. So I'll keep that forward if I ever do have a kid. Kids will literally wait until their parents are there to cry about having fallen five minutes ago. Man, cats really are like babies, aren't they? Because they love doing that shit. Dealing with a two-year-old is literally babysitting a drunk person. I think the the main thing that I see other people do that bothers me is I feel like people patronize their kids too much. You know? I think you should just talk to them pretty normal. I'm not saying you should be an autistic dipshit and talk to your kid like they're an adult. I'm saying that you should try to hit a level tone with them because it teaches them more about how to interact with other people, which is pretty important when they're growing up. And it also means as they get older, they don't feel talked down to. Like if you've got like an eight-year-old kid and you're patronizing the fuck out of them, they do register that and it makes them feel like they can't really talk to you. And that's how they end up, I don't know, smoking cigarettes and keeping it from you. I mean, you can baby talk like a like a two-month-old. I'm not saying you can never do the baby talk. I, I just mean like, you know what I mean. You should try to talk to them like they're a person because they are. Talk to them with respect. A lot of parents don't do that because they don't want the kids to respect. They want the kids to respect them, but not the other way around. Yeah, it's really f up. A lot of people just shouldn't be parents because they legitimately think of kids as like little versions of themselves, little arbiters of their will that don't like deserve respect. You know, being a kid is difficult. I, I can say this with confidence coming from a person whose job lends him roughly the same amount of responsibility that I had when I was 10 years old, you know, like I, that's kind of the level that I'm at in terms of my brain development. And, uh, you know, it, it can be difficult sometimes as a former child, right? A former and current child. Thank you. You know, 
I had a brief period of time during which I worked a real job. Uh, I think, um, you know, you have to respect that a little bit. I remember how much angst and ennui I was experiencing back when I was like 16. You can't, you don't want to talk that down. If you've got, because I feel like that's one of the reasons teenagers do all the stupid shit they do. It's because they feel bad. And then a parent is like, Oh, you think that's bad? Wait till you get a job. Well, I did get a job after high school, and I was a lot more emotionally stable then than I was when I was 16. So actually, no, I don't think so. That's the point of being a teen, to freak out with hormones. Exactly, but it doesn't get any, like, respect. You know? If your kid is six and they're drawing stupid bullshit with crayons, you gotta respect that, because they're putting their heart and soul into it. If your kid is 16 and they're, like, genuinely feeling suicidal because... Tony from Homeroom it ghosted them over text and started dating their former friend. You have to respect that because when you were 16, you were also a retard as your child is now. You have to respect that. You know, you can't, you, you have to respect the process, but, but I'm, but I'm not a parent, but I'm not a parent. So I don't know. I'm just yapping. I don't know. Not a parent. Kind of like the idea of being one in theory, but that's just a, such a big life change. Not a very responsible person either, you know? I feel like I've never quite mastered being diligent with taking care of myself, though I've been a lot better about it the past few years. The last few years, I have been much better about it. I've even been trying to do, like, morning stretches, you know, like a little routine for 10 minutes. If you value sleep and freedom, don't. I already don't get much sleep, and in terms of freedom, I don't really leave the house that much. I think it would more be like, Okay, here's the real determining question. Can you be a dad or a mom, I guess, or, or a non-binary parent? Thanks. The real question is, if you're, okay, you've been on Ishin the Sword Saint for three hours. You've gotten him to third phase. You're out of gourd flask charges, and he's almost down, and you hear a thump? And then your two-year-old starts screaming from the adjacent room. And you know for an absolute fact that all they've done is stub their toe. You know in your heart of hearts, you know for an absolute fact that all they've done is stub their toe. And they're screaming loud because they're a dumbass. And you can't pause because it's Sekiro. Okay? If you can set the controller down and die. Oh, you can pause Sekiro? Okay, okay, fine, fine, fine. You're fighting, you're fighting the, El you finally, Elden Beast, Elden Beast, whatever, shut up, okay? Are, are you fine setting down the controller and losing that run to go deal with your kid's stupid bullshit? Or would you carry that resentment? And I think it's okay to be a little peeved, but in like a lighthearted way. But if you feel resentment, then I don't think you're in a state where you can take care of a young kid. You know what I mean? Like, if again, being peeved, that's fine. You're only human, right? But, like, if, if you're thinking, like, God damn it, like, you, know, you go, because you bring that to the energy that you engage with a kid, and two-year-olds understand on some level when you're being like that, and when they get older, they definitely do. So, you know, yeah, that's insanely immature. Yeah, but a lot of parents do that. And I'm lucky, man. My parents were genuinely fantastic. So I'm not, like, projecting complaints from my side of the aisle. But I've seen it happen with other people. And I've heard other people talk about their parents being like that, you know? I, and, and it's, it's, uh, yeah. Hachi 88, or Ailey 88. Shouldn't just say 88. You know? Practice on a pet first. Okay, I... But there's a difference, right? Like... Because you can be resentful to cats, and it's fine. <laughs> if if Artemy throws up on the carpet, I can act. I can call him a stupid asshole. It's it's okay. He doesn't know what I'm saying. He's just looking up at me. It's all right. I, I will. I will. I do think there is a parallel. I do think there is a relationship. Right? There's an overlap in the Venn diagram of. Like, here's taking care of a dog or a cat, and here's taking care of a kid. There's an overlap for sure. It's just, it's definitely a significant difference in many respects and in scale. Obviously in scale. Um, but if you can't handle having a cat or dog, then yeah, you definitely can't handle having a kid, right? Like, that, that, that's like the lower tier on the ladder. So if you can't do that, 
I hate the idea that it's even comparable. I mean, it's comparable in the sense of like caring about someone other than yourself and needing to take care of them. And I think that's a significant part of it. It's like a mental state thing, like even thinking about that, you know, like being in a position where you don't want to get out of bed, but then you think, wait, something else needs me. And then you do it. I, I understand the like the the parallel there, you know, um, the ability to to care or to have that because some people don't have that. You know, Vermin, they haven't been meowing out like crazy for quite a while, but I'm also willing to deal with it, I think, a little bit more in concept from a kid because, uh, I don't know. Because <laughs> with a kid, it might be slightly more comprehensible. It's a human man. They're a human. Look, okay. If you if you're not allowed to be a parent because you get annoyed when your cats won't shut the fuck up, then no one gets to be a parent. I think we have to be fair to me here. Okay, we have to be a little bit fair to me. Would you debate your kid like that? I th if I ever had a kid, I feel like um, I feel like it. I I would have to like probably not make him a component of live stream content. I I feel like that'd be I'd be doing him a disservice if I did so. Uh, or her, I might tolerate even having a, a girl. This is all very hypothetical. I don't have any children, you know? Very hypothetical. Are you pregnant? I'm actually down a few pounds, if you can believe it. I'm so svelte in my, in my Vanta black shirt. Look at this. It's like, you can't even tell. Like, am, am I fat? Am I skinny? You have no idea. It's impossible to... You have no idea. Losing weight while pregnant's a bad sign, though. I, okay, okay, you've got me there. I should take better care of my little baby bump. Hello. Guess who woke me up at 6 a.m. by nibbling on a toe? Did you bite my toe? Why did you do that? Why did you do that? Why do you look like you're looking at something? Looking at a ghost? Looking at a ghost? <laughs> 